This is my 1949 model Maytag AMP automatic washer. It was made in 1950, but as you can see, it has a one piece back. And I've added a switch so I can run the washer with the lid open. This washing machine has hot and warm selections for the wash. All rinses are warm. We turn it on, the light in front goes on. And as soon as I raise the lid, it will go off. So we're gonna fill it and wash some towels. Okay, the washer is filled and I flipped the switch so we can watch it wash. I'm gonna add some detergent. Now you'll notice that this center cylinder has raised up. The way it works is the, uh, as the water fills, the cylinder goes up and it actuates a uh, switch here in the lid which shuts off the water and turns the motor on. So we bypassed it a little bit by turning the switch on. Uh, originally Maytag supplied a little kit with two switches that were, uh, could be installed on the back for demonstrations in the showroom because most people at this point had ringer washers and they wondered you know, how an automatic would work. And the only way to get this one to demonstrate with the lid up is to have these auxiliary switches on the back. I installed the switch I did not cut the wiring inside the washer there's various places where there's solderless connectors known as Douglas connectors and I bought some at the local Ace hardware store and spliced my switch in without uh, cutting the original wires because I didn't really want to uh, do anything negative to the washer I got this washer about three or four years ago. It had been purchased, I think, in 1950, and whoever had it turned it in um, in the early 80s for a new Maytag washer, and it was kept in that Maytag dealer's showroom for the last years. So it was always stored indoors, and uh, that's one reason why it's in such nice condition. The only thing that was wrong with it is I need to put a, a new drain hose on, and there was a broken spring in the suspension underneath, so I did take the cabinet off, uh, and uh, that was about it. I didn't have to do any repairs on it. I did spray a little WD-40 on the brake mechanism because it wasn't spinning when I first got it. So everything works now. I'm gonna go ahead and advance the timer so we can see how this washer spins and drains. There is a perforated tub, but under that perforated tub is a solid tub. And so to drain, this washer has to go into a spin. All the water goes up and over. There is a pump below that will pump the water out. The pump is running at this present time. You can see a little bit of water squirting out. Um, there was also a model available if you had a floor drain, it would just drain into it. We're gonna go ahead and get it into a spin. This type of washer will drain or uh, spin the water out rather quickly and then uh, it goes into an outer tub where it's pumped away as quickly as the pump can pump it. So 
all the water has spun out of the tub. It's in the outer tub. It's still being pumped out, as you can see over here. This washer spin dries at about, uh, I could look it up, it's a little over 500 RPM, whereas the frigid air of this era will spin at 1,140 RPM, getting the clothes quite a bit drier. The next cycle on this type of washer is, it says rinse here, but it's actually a, a half of a minute of water going in and flush rinsing. Uh, since I don't have a second switch on the back of this machine, I have to close the tub to let it flush rinse. You can hear it. It does a pretty good rinse by using this method. You'll see a lot of water coming out over here now. This is flushing away some of the soap. It'll go into a second deep rinse after this. The water stopped running in. Oh, the water's still going in, sorry. Out. Okay, the water turned off, so it's spinning and pumping out. it'll go into a full deep rinse. We can advance it. That'll stop the spin and start the fill again. Okay, the machine has filled up with the rinse water. Like I said, it's warm and uh, now it's going to go into the final spin. for an, about another minute, so I'm just going to cut it off here.